We are going to discuss another similarity measure today named the cosine similarity. Cosine similarity between two vectors x and y is computed using the following formula. That is, cosine similarity is the ratio of the dot product of the two vectors and the multiplication of the norms of these vectors. Hi, I am Dr. Shahriyar Hossein. You are watching one of the videos of the Data Science Lecture Series from ComputingForAll.com. Let us discuss the cosine formula in detail. The numerator of the equation for the cosine similarity contains x dot y. x dot y refers to the dot product of two vectors x and y, each of length n. The dot product of two vectors or two rows of a data set is computed by taking the multiplication of the two vectors in each dimension and then summing them up. For example, let us say that we have a four dimensional data set. That is, we have four features or four columns in the data. The dot product between row 1 and row 3 is equal to 10 times 9 plus 3 times 4 plus 3 times 6 plus 5 times 4, which is equal to 140. If we want to compute the cosine similarity between row 1 and row 3, we will need two more items the norm of row 1 and the norm of row 3. Are we familiar with norms? If not, let's discuss it. The p norm of a given vector is computed this way. Take the p power of the absolute value in each dimension, sum them up, and then take 1 over p power of that summation. If you have 10, 3, 3, 5 as a vector, then L1 norm is absolute value of 10 to the power 1 plus absolute value of 3 to the power 1 plus absolute value of 3 to the power 1 plus the absolute value of 5 to the power 1, which results in 10 plus 3 plus 3 plus 5. The summation is 21. Then take a power of 1 over 1, which does not change the value at all. Therefore, L1 norm of this vector 10, 3, 3, 5 is 21. Now what is the L2 norm of the same vector? L2 norm of the same vector is the absolute value of 10 to the power 2 plus the absolute value of 3 to the power 2, plus the absolute value of 3 to the power 2, plus the absolute value of 5 to the power 2, which results in 100 plus 9 plus 9 plus 25. The summation is 143. Now take a power of half for 143. That means the square root of 143, which results in 11.95826. What is the L3 norm of the same vector 10, 3, 3, 5? L3 norm of the same vector is the absolute value of 10 to the power 3 plus the absolute value of 3 to the power 3 plus the absolute value of 3 to the power 3 plus the absolute value of 5 to the power 3 which results in 1000 plus 27 plus 27 plus 125 the summation is 1179 now take a power of 1 over 3 or cubic root of 1179 the cubic root of 1179 is 10.564232. 2. 
Now that you have seen how to compute L1, L2, L3 norms and you are familiar with the formula, you can compute L4 norm, L5 norm, so and so forth. In data science, the most common norms are L1 norm and L2 norm. L1 norm is illustrated by a pair of single bars in two sides of a vector. L2 norm is commonly illustrated by two bars at each side of the notation. Now, so that one can use the notation for any norm, there is another convention using the single bar at both sides. When we want to say L1 norm, we put single bars at two sides and we include one as the subscript of the right bar. When we want to state L2 norm, we put single bars at two sides and we include two as the subscript of the right bar. When we want to state L3 norm, we put single bars at two sides and we include three as the subscript of the right bar, so and so forth. For L2 norm, the use of double bars at each side is equivalent of using single bars with a subscript of 2 at the right. To compute the cosine similarity, we do not need L1 or L3 norm. We need L2 norm. If we want to compute the cosine similarity between row 1 and row 3, we need L2 norm of row 1, which we have computed. Now we have to compute the L2 norm of row 3. Row 3 contains 9, 4, 6, 4. L2 norm of row 3 will be square root of absolute value of 9 square plus absolute value of 4 square plus absolute value of 6 square plus absolute value of 4 square which results in a square root of 149, which is 12.20656. Now we have all the values we need. Given the equation to compute the cosine similarity, the calculations are shown here for cosine similarity between row 1 and row 3 of the table. The dot product of row 1 and row 3 is 140. The L2 norm of row 1 is 11.95826. The L2 norm of row 3 is 12.20656. The final result becomes 0 0.959106060702. Now compute the cosine similarity between row 1 and row 5. Please do the calculations. The cosine similarity between row 1 and row 5 should be around 0 0.9349. Cosine similarity may vary between negative 1 to 1. In the positive space, the similarity varies between 0 and 1. It is specifically used in the positive space for document datasets where document vectors have positive numerical values. Hopefully, we will discuss more on document vectors in the future. Another item I should note is when computing cosine similarity, if one of the vectors contains all zeros, cosine similarity will give a division by zero error. An assumption here is that the origin 0, 0, 0, all zeros is not a data point in the data table. Another theoretical item I should mention is that when you are computing the cosine similarity, you are actually computing the angle between two vectors. If the similarity value is 0 0.5, then the angle between the two vectors is 60 degrees. You might recall from trigonometry that the cosine of 60 degree is half. 
if you find that the two vectors are the same then the similarity value using the formula we learned today will be one indicating that these two vectors has the highest possible similarity that actually means that the angle created between these two vectors which are exactly the same is zero that means these vectors overlap on top of one another also you might recall from trigonometry that the cosine of a zero degree is one what i am trying to say is that this cosine similarity between the two rows of a data set is not anything new we are already familiar with it from geometry and trigonometry therefore the theories we learned over years in high school and in early stage college courses they will help us go miles in data science i hope the concept of cosine similarity is clear Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell shaped button to receive notifications when we publish any new video. I will see you next time.